Hello everyone and welcome to Wilds of Eldraine traditional draft. Gun, Gumdrop Poisoner, it's going to be the first pick here, it's a very very good card. Even if you somehow have to just play this as a 3-2 uh, lifelinker without getting the trigger to do anything, a 3-mana 3-2 lifelinker is a totally fine card to play. But of course you will um, almost always want to be a able to get the minus x minus x which you can do it by help with help of other cards but you can also just create the food token with one mana using this card and then at five mana you can crack the food token and play this and give minus three minus three at least to someone else which is good value of course all right i'm gonna take it it's the best card in the pack the other options to pick are the belligerent of the ball maybe feed the cauldron uh could be the best common here but it's, I mean, it's close to the crappy giant, I think. But yeah, let's take this. It's easily the best card. And can I follow this up with a bl uh, blue... No, not blue. Black card. Uh, I could, but the, of course these two black cards aren't really... You know, they are playable, but not really worthy of a second pick here when there are better options from other colors. The rare here is not good. I mean, it can be in certain decks, but it's not even such an ability that you want to draft around it. The 5 mana enchantment is a lot um, to do uh, because it doesn't affect the board immediately. And there, there's an adventure, but it's not, not really a good card. So the considerations in here are the Emberet Veteran, Graceful Takedown, maybe Hollow Scavenger. But if I took a green card, I think I would take the gra uh, Graceful Takedown. But do I want to take the one drop red card. Red black is obviously a very very good archetype. So is black green though. Um, it's a matter of taste. I, I'm gonna take the removal here. And um, well, had I taken the red card, I would have a decision between the monstrous rage and the three mana black cards in here. I did not take the red card there. So assuming I will be black green with these two first picks, which would be the better black card. I think the Lord Skitter's Butcher is not the best in a black-green deck. In, in black credits, of course, the, uh, at its best, I think. Uh, so I could just take the feed, the cauldron here. It's a totally reasonable removal spell. And I do want to be black uh, because of the poisoner, so I'll take that and see what it's gonna be open. Oh, now I'm very happy I did not go the red route uh, because there's a welcome to Sweet Tooth here. There's also the Hollow Scavenger, which I would of course like to have because you can have a black green deck that has a lot of food and ways, ways to benefit from uh, food. And this thing, you know, kind of participates in both. This benefits from the other food sources and this works, functions as a food source for your other, other things. Anyhow, this welcome to Sweet Tooth is just amazing. Uh, even by itself, it's really decent. You know, basically you are going to get one one and then two plus one plus one counters at least with this card alone. Remember that chapter three says uh, X uh, is one plus the number of foods you control. So you always get at least one counter, even if you use up the food. Now there's also a hatching glance, which is great, but it's not. I mean, given the start here, I really want to just try to make it a black green deck. And uh, I have a very good start for such a deck. Here, uh, there are still two good options. I mean, it's gonna. I mean, it's either the Scream Puff or the Conceited Witch. Um, well, I do like the Witch. I already have some three mana cards, and this Puff is quite good. I actually like this more than the green five drop options. Not counting the Hamlet Glutton, of course, which is kind of a seven drop, but also a five drop when you have the bargain available. I would take Hamlet Glutton over the Scream Puff, but I think here. I don't need to consider it which that much. This is very decent in the other combinations, I think. But in green black, uh, maybe you get some other three drops that are better for the deck. So I'm gonna take this thing. I am not going to take another screen puff here. I think I will just take the Ferris as well, folks. Um, it doesn't really do anything with the food stuff, but it's it's just a decent card. And it gives you something to sacrifice for bargain effects. There's a not date after all. There's another copy of these. I think I saw this earlier. Uh, but yeah, let's take the four drop. It's also drafting a mana curve in here. Mm, okay, unnatural growth. Now this is a card that is just amazing. 
because notice this um, works also on, on the opponent's turn, so your blockers will be double-sized at the beginning of each combat, not just your combat on your turn. Now the problem with this card is obviously the quadruple green cost, but I am early in the draft. I can actually try to get fixing to make this a card worth including, and then again what would I take here? Fell Horseman, Brave the Wilds, Tempest Heart, they are not that exciting. This is going to be very good if I can make it work, and if I can't make it work, I don't miss a lot by you know, passing the other cards in there. Alright, so Candy Trail, Titanic Growth. I don't think I'd need necessarily a Titanic Growth in a black-green deck. I take the black, uh, Candy Trail and here another... I would really like actually to have a Prophetic Prism here because of the unnat unnatural growth. The, the Candy Trail isn't quite as good. Mm, I could also keep open the red uh, black or red green deck by taking the crappy giant but maybe i'll just take the candy trailer this is after all food let's say if i find another spell well, welcome to sweet tooth uh that would be a reason to play multiple candy trails pretty surely all right do i need to have a two drop i don't think the red tooth red tooth genealogist is that great in this archetype and neither is garrux uprising i'll take this as a two drop either, but i really want to get some better two drops and, and just cut this from the deck but at least you know i got a two drop which i do need at this stage in the draft um none of this thing matters i guess the witch's mark is kind of <laughs> splashable if i somehow end up splashing red and I, and I run out of playables, then I can maybe <laughs> play this thing too, but it, the other cards were even worse options, I would say. Okay, so two good options here. The Return from the Wild, which is nice to fix this and maybe ramp into this cream puff, or just have the cream search. I have some food to sack for the bargain if I need to, but I think with the Unnatural Growth, I'm gonna take the Return from the Wild. Also, getting a food token here might matter if I get some more food synergies. I already have Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Uh, the f um, well, something else maybe too, but we'll see. Yeah, the quadruple green really requires a lot of uh, mana. I mean, 10 forests and 7 swamps wouldn't be enough to run this card. I need more. Okay, this is very nice last pick. It's a playable card, totally. Um, mm -mm -mm. So what do we have in here? We have a stab wound, which I actually have... You know, I, I really like this a lot at the beginning of the set, uh, you know, the format, but I have quite often used this as an expensive removal on something that, you know, is like a three, two toughness creature or one toughness creature, or then I just put this on, on something like a 3-3, three, three, and then they just jump block it, so I don't give, even get to push damage through. So I don't think it's actually that good. There are a lot of options for this deck. I don't care about the Leech Knight's Conquest here. Um, I kind of want to have a Tudor, but the Red Tooth, Red Tooth Vanguard, not necessarily... I mean, it's probably going to be the Feature Call or, or maybe even the Sweet Tooth Witch, but I'll take still the Removal spell. And um, Candy Grapple, that's, that's got to be the pick here. I would... Actually, if the Candy Grapple wasn't here, I would just take the Evolving Wilds to make more fixing for the Unnatural Growth. But I'm totally okay with, you know, just not playing this card. If I don't get the fixing, I'm not gonna play the card. It's not worth having an, a card that is uncastable a lot of the time. But yeah, Candy Grapple, the easy pick here. Sir Ginger, it is at its best in black-green because you have a lot of food. So this can get, pick up some counters and give you some scries very easily. Also this tech actually could consider running the Knight of the Sweets' Revenge, but you know that card can come back to me. Also there's the Coven which mm, is fine playable even if you don't have access to blue. But anyway here it's very easy. Good quality, high quality 2-drop I would say. Okay, Ginger Brood. <laughs> yeah well I don't really need it here. I, I much rather take the Hollow Scavenger. It's actually exactly the kind of card I want to have here. Alright, it's looking very good for now, but uh, so far I'm not going to play the unnatural growth. I would need more fixing, like Prophetic Prism, uh, Evolving Wilds, stuff like that. Alright, there's a Rietus Tempting Apple. I don't really think that's the kind of card I want to run in this deck. 
Yeah, it's four mana. It's a lot, and I'm I'm more like a grind deck than an aggressive deck that tries to win with certain effects, and then the loss of three life. No, I will just take the Werefox number two. It's totally fine, even in multiples. It's also, I mean, these are my only four drops, so it's a decent uh, draft pick for mana curve purposes as well. And here I have a royal treatment at the Worming Assassin. Oh, wow. All right, Godric, which is pretty first pickable for any red drafter, and it's still packed to pick six. So there can't be many red drafters, and the the ones that are red drafters, you know, the five <laughs> drafters before me. I don't know what they picked. Maybe some high quality removal or something. Anyhow, I'm taking the treatment here. I like it quite a lot. So let's just pick that and move on. Uh, this is not going to be an up to the beanstalk deck. I won't really have a lot of triggers for it. Now the question is, is it going to be a double screen puff deck or do I want to take the oof for the, as a two drop and you know also as a way to deal with some problematic things. I actually like the puff here. I'm going to just take it. And here I have a shattered the oath. Scarecrow guide would work with the unnatural growth. But shattered the oath is actually Decent. There's also a two drop blocker here. I don't care about the ginger brute. Uh, it's gonna be between the two drop fixing thing or, or the shatter the oath here. Uh, I think I'll take the removal. Okay, I get my two drop here. It's not synergistic with this deck really much, but it doesn't have to be. It's a 3 1 trampler, and I have a few ways maybe to uh, try to get it back. Leaping Ambush of Spiderfoot. By the way, this is only nine creatures. I didn't even realize. I guess the Welcome to Sweet Tooth is a creature as well, but... Uh, well, I take the sideboard card here rather than the trick. I need more creatures. And here I'm just taking the Witch Stalker. I mean, just take something. Uh, Titanic Growth. I don't think I'm gonna main deck it, but might as well pick it. There's an, uh, an entire pack left still in the draft. But yeah, I need mostly just the creatures. Oh, well, you know, I can take a Virtue of Persistence to <laughs> Amazing Bum, Bum Mythic, obviously. If this wasn't here, I would just take the Root Rider 4 and be very happy about this pick too. But yeah, I mean, this is just a Bum, Bum Mythic. I even don't have a full set of these yet, so this uh, is going to also add to my collection, but I will have a full set of Mythics regardless, so anyhow, this is the pick, let's move on. <laughs> Okay then, um, Stab Wound is still here. I have some number of removal now, Candy Grapple, a couple of feeds, there's the Verge of Persistence, the Shatter the Oath, and I really need creatures, so I think I'll take the Sentinel of Lost Lore. It's a rare, but it's not exactly a bomb rare, it's still a good one. I'm taking it here. Uh, over the stab wound and another copy of a royal treatment here. How about here? Okay, evolving wilds. I'll take that. I will take an evolving wilds here. I don't know about the unnatural growth yet, but I think I need more fixing even in addition to this evolving wilds to make it a, an inclusion in the deck. But let's just take the land now. I will play evolving wilds, of course, regardless of whether I play this thing or not. All right, there's a baron Audi, which. I had a black green deck that had like three of these a few drafts ago and uh, this did some nice work but now this would be my first fairy so it's just a 1-3 flyer that can pump its power with with a pretty large mana investment i think this deck just prefers the scavenger more here i think i'll take that okay there's a collector's vault now I'm gonna take that, but it's also good with the ginger, by the way, because this also, you know, when you sacrifice treasures, you get to add plus one plus one counters here. This is also, you know, mana fixing for this thing. Um, I don't think this is a worming deck. Black green usually isn't a deck that beneficially benefits from the worming that much. It's fine, but nothing like too important. Okay, minus one, minus one to opponent's creatures, but I have basically no way to uh, get the white mana. So, um, I think I might just take the other Witch Stalker in for matchups where I really need the 
Ah, uh, two drop. I could take the assassin as well. I don't know. I take the witch talker, you know, just to make sure I have enough early plays. All right, I can, I can consider playing this. Not probably gonna main deck it though. Oppression. Yeah, I'm not playing that. It's a symmetric effect. <laughs> it's pretty bad. But I guess I'll take 20 gems because I have enough playables and I don't need a 3 drop such as the worming here, so I'll take 20 gems now. Dream spoilers. Um, how many instant effects I'm going to have? I have now a lot, but I'm not sure how many of them I'm actually gonna play in the deck. The Whisper is not that great either. I guess I'll take the Dream Spoilers. It's maybe a card I can play when the opponent has a bunch of uh, one toughness creatures. Okay, I think I'll take the Worm here because I also am pretty sure I'm not playing the unnatural growth here. It it is just I don't have enough fixing for that. I, I really didn't see even a prophetic prism here anywhere. So I'm gonna have this. Beanstalk Worm as my third 5-drop creature here. Hmm. Okay, so again we have this confusing... How can I filter that stuff? I can't. So, all that, you know, the bright uh, spots here mean that the card is in my deck, despite showing here. This is just a card style thing. So, um, I need to scan the cards that don't have these um, squares in here. A Sanguine Bond is, you know, it's with the amount of food I have, it's something you could consider running, but definitely not in the main deck. Because if you're playing, if you're playing against another deck that has access to food tokens, this is not worth a card, but I could maybe see in some very specific situations to sideboard this in because it, you know, with stuff like a hollow scavenger and uh, what else? I, mean, I don't know how many ways do I have to make food, but regardless, point is, it's something you could sideboard in some, in some very, very specific scenarios. Not here though. So I'm not playing... Um, the oppression, I'm not playing the sanguine bond. These things I have in my deck. Let's just put red and sorry, black and green here. Uh, none of this stuff is yeah, okay. Spider food, best cell bloodline, or the commune, commune with nature's not necessary. So, all guide lantern, not necessary. Okay, so this is I mean, I don't have anything in the sideboard that I intend to be playing. I don't have enough fixing for this, which I already said. I'm going to cut it. This is a decent amount of, you know, late game things. From the main deck, I would actually like to cut the tracker and the dream spoilers. They are sideboard options. And then what we have in here is the multiple witch stalkers. Let's see if I cut them both. Do I have enough two drops? Because I kind of want to cut them because they are not very good at taggers in this deck. Okay, so this, there are three two drops only but there's also the welcome to sweet tooth huh. that's kind of fourth and then there's the candy crapple which i can at least use as an interactive two drop in here i don't think i need to return from the wild so i'm not going to take it uh, i will play the card draw i will probably cut a main deck titanic growth with only 12 creatures pump spells are a little bit you know, it's, it's when you have only 12 creatures, it's possible you don't have any creatures on the battlefield uh, at some point, stages of the game. And then, of course, pump spells are just total blanks in your hand. So I'm going to cut that thing from the main deck. Now, I have a two candy trails. I could kind of play two candy trails as some, um, you know, ways to dig into land. So, I mean, I could cut one of them and play 17, or I could play two of them and play 16, because these are things that help you hit your land drops regardless with the scry and stuff. And I do like to have them in here instead of basic lands, uh, because the Sir Ginger synergizes with them, uh, the Welcome to Sweet Tooth synergizes with them, and also it kind of synergizes with the Hollow Scavenger, although you most often want to pay two mana and uh, 
to, to gain three life and draw a card rather than have this thing have plus two plus two until end of turn but you still can have the threat of activation to maybe uh, enable some attacks for the scavengers because you have a candy trail still left and one mana to use it so the opponent can't really block with their three four um uh, because you can still sack the candy trail to eat it for free um so i would say this is the deck so with 12 creatures plus the welcome to sweet tooth which represents a creature as well this is i would say good enough the ways to get food here are one two three um, well these are kind of ways to, i don't know if should i ca count these but let's count the these three the hollow scavenger and gumdrop poisoner they can generate food that's three and then there are four five six yeah, i have i have some ways to gain food for you know to perpetually maybe uh, threaten these things to get pumped and uh the synergies with the search injury i don't like the wicked visitor here at all but i don't really know if i want to cut a two drop here yeah, I think I want to have it just as a creature. I also have the web boxes, which I, you know, I want to have some targets for the adventure part of this spell. Yeah, I'm really, I really don't think I can play the unnatural growth with just one evolving wild, one return from the wilds, and one collector's vault, which helped me fix a little bit. Uh, but thing is, I still have here 10 black cards. I'm not going to play like five swamps. I need to play a healthy number of swamps and that means I can't play a ton of forests and I would want to have like at least 12 ways to get green mana so um, I don't know evolving wilds 10 forests vault no I, I think it's not worth it I have these five drops they are more reliably more reliably be able to be cast so this is fine um Let's add the rest of the land. Um, I have a even mix of black and uh, green here. I have a double caster, three drop, double caster, five drop here from different colors. Yeah, I think because I'm playing only 16 lands and the Evolving Wild, so I'm gonna have eight, seven basics. And I think it's going to be eight forests because I want to have, I mean, the double caster black is a five drop. And the double caster green is a two drop. So I think I'd, I need double green earlier than double black. So that's the tiebreaker here. Okay, that is the main deck. Mm, okay, this is totally reasonable. Uh, hand here, I'm on the draw. And this is the reason I play stuff like Wicked Visitor here, just to have a play on turn 2, then I can have a turn 3, either feed the cauldron or maybe use this for some benefit. Um, I could play this, but then the 4-drop I could play on the next turn is only this without... No, it doesn't make sense, I'm gonna play this instead. Um, next turn I can... I, I think they're quite likely to play the scavenger, so I probably will just deal with it immediately by using the Vita Cauldron, unless I draw some other 3 mana effect. I guess if I draw a land it's different, but let's see if I draw... Okay, so this would actually give me a four, 5 drop on the next turn. Interesting. That is interesting. Because if I use the Vita the Cauldron, my next turn is a little bit un underwhelming, I guess. So let's... um. Let's do this. Get the pipe drop on the next turn. And I think I will just um, make the visitor into a 3 3 right away. Just to be mana efficient. There will be many turns probably when I don't have the two mana left over. Although I guess I could see having to feed the cauldron and then this two mana adventure. But I'd rather hit my five drops here now. Okay, they bounce that, which is fine. And I can start, of course, with the Scream Puff. 
Now they can block it, but I have, you know, to feed the cauldron here, so... Because they can block and, and threaten, you know, make this into 5-4. Okay, they have an extraordinary joint. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, all of these will make them draw cards now. Well, I mean, opponent had a very good... Oh, very good. And this is actually amazing. They're gonna draw a card from each of these and, and from these. They just this will draw at least four cards. And they got the tempo too. I, I think I'm gonna lose to this card because not to this card, but you know the cards they get to draw because of it. Yeah, it's really, really bad. Not even sure what I want to do here. I could play two spells, but I Ah, whatever. It's... it's bad. Yeah, this journey when I have all these in exile, because you know, you can pause and read what these stars. They can draw one card every turn when a thing enters from exile. So they are just... and this scavenger is actually doing all this work. So they are gonna block this thing. It still has death touch, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't care about it. I mean, they can trade, sure. If they have a, some kind of trick, I guess, have a feed the cauldron here. But it's fine for them because they're gonna get so many cards in here that it's kind of ridiculous. Oh, let's have this and this. So this 6-5 can block the worm here. Mm. They can they play these things, they drop cards from both. Yeah, the extraordinary journey. Uh, this is the maybe one of the best ones I've seen. I mean not counting the ones when they just bounce opponents, you know, two creatures and you can swing for lethal. For for an extra no for the extraordinary journey where the bounce was the less relevant thing. This was a uh, this is one of the best journeys of that kind. Okay, so let's just get this thing done. Can't bargain it right now. Mm. I can maybe make this thing deal a lot more damage, but... Well, first I just trade with their thing. I can still, you know, get my own bomb mythic. The, the thing that returns stuff from graveyard that could be a kick to victory if they can't answer it. Um, but here I will. I need to be a little bit careful because this is only once per turn. So if I can play two things from exile from the same turn, they, then they, at least the second one does not draw them their card. Well, I'm still gonna play this. I don't think I'm gonna not play this. I can try to somehow tempo them out, but I would need to find I would need to find uh, the mythic rare to win this game. I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> I don't even want to calculate how many or count how many cards uh, they have drawn with this, but it's a lot. It's... I mean, they basically would have an empty hand otherwise. Oh, they have a griffin airy here as a splash. That was like a surprising thing. So they can make a well, they can't make that now. But they can sack these to get a 2 to flyer. So I'm not gonna show them I have the poisoner here. Oh, Sir Ginger. That is a good one. Yeah, I can attack with both. They're gonna do that. Fine. So I'm gonna do this. And um, no reason to do anything else right now.
Okay, that's there, and now they can get the 6 5, but I can now kill it. No, I actually can't because I, I have no target for this other than my own Wicked Visitor. Now, this is, yeah, this is not even up to one target creature. Um, I need to gain 5 life to make to be able to kill this, and I can't gain 5 now. Because I, I, I guess I'm still doing this. Maybe I draw something that makes me want to use all the mana here. Okay, graceful takedown. Well, that works in combination. So let's play this first. I have mana to do it all. Seven mana, ten, I need five. This is, I think, exactly. I need to. I need five mana for this thing. That leaves me with four. Then I need to do this and the graceful takedown. That's going to be enough. Okay, but I'm gonna do this of course first because I want to get the trigger for the Sir Ginger here. No need for a forest. And then I can do this. They will I can give minus three minus three to this guy. They get the card by the way. Can I make them deck out? And then a graceful take down I will of course. Gain some life here too. And now, I mean, they are still having a hand with seven, uh, with, you know, how many? Nine cards. <laughs> that is actually nine cards in their hand. So, without the virtue of. Uh, what's the black card persistence? Virtue of. I don't know what it is, but. Um, I'm, they, they just overwhelm me with their cards. They can gain three life to get a token here. I mean, this game is totally about the extraordinary journey. I think it has drawn like seven cards to them or something like that. That really is the case. Okay, now they at least have only one mana left, but do they still have a one mana trick? It seems like they might have one. Alright, well, let's start with this now. Yeah, they have something. Oh, but, oh, they have this activation. That's that's also the. It doesn't need, mean they have like a royal treatment or anything. Okay, so Red Tooth Vanguard is not really the card, but that I need. But the Scavenger is good with the Search Ginger, so I'm gonna do this. And I'm going to draw a card. I'm gonna make this Search Ginger quite large in here. Oh uh, yes, I'll try and I, I will get this thing here. Now, problem with this is that I would need to grow with quite a bit more. I'm gonna kill this. At least try doing that. Do they have a royal treatment? Oh, they do. Well, I mean, what can I do? What can I do? They had a royal treatment, so I had no food for me there. Okay, then. Um... Oh, well, that is very annoying. I guess I'll just create the food token here. Get another scry out of this thing. Because I need a virtue of persistence here. That's probably the only way for me to win at this stage. Can attack here. I don't care how they block there, but I mean, they are just... Yeah, I'm gonna just try to get the virtue of persistence. Yeah, they, they have their hand of six cards because of this journey. That has been an amazing card in this matchup. Well, they are drawing more cards. I guess they are twelve. They have twelve cards left. So if I can get the verge of persistence in here and I can get it to stick, now they can have means to deal with enchantments. Um, I guess I can then win with nothing else by them just you know decking out. But I would need to get that thing. It is somewhere in the deck. And that's not it. Oh, well, let's play this. I mean, they can draw another card, because why not? <sighs> I have never had this effective uh, sorry, journey. Let's 
yeah, I don't know if the verge of persistence is even going to be enough. I guess I have some big creatures I can keep make make him keep coming back. But it is. I mean, because they have a fast clock here too. They have their champion, and I'm only assuming they can add a lot more to the board. And they can even get these two two flyers here. They still have a food they can crack. So I'm not going to deal enough damage to them. I need to win. I mean, in any sort of time frame. So the only way I can win is maybe the words of persistence. And they might have a counter spells, ways to deal with the enchantments, all that. So Saturday the Oath and feed the cauldron. I guess I need a satyr here. I wouldn't mind the feed, but the problem is I just need to draw the mythic rare. Satyr deals with the champion, which I do need to deal with. So let's let's do that. I guess they could have the counter spell that makes me pay two. They don't have any fairies, so I'm gonna play the land here. Okay, so am I going to attack? I'm not gonna beat them by attacking with the Hollow Scavenger here. So I will buy time as much as I can by blocking to find the virtue of... I'm not sure if the black is the persistence one, but... Okay. So they are actually having, what, double white here in this deck? It seemed like a blue-green deck first, but it's, they actually have a... Not only a Griffin area, which is passable, of course, but they also have a double white. But I mean, I guess if you draw like <laughs> 31 cards in over the course of a game, you can get your um, you can get your <laughs> mana sources. All right, come on. The world isn't. I guess that was a reason to not play all my lands. I forgot I have this in the deck. Well, not much time left. I'm taking seven here. So, uh, Words of Persistence is unlikely to win anymore at this stage. They can just add something to the board now, and that's gonna be enough to win in a couple of turns, regardless of what I'm drawing here. And with the hand of, you know, six cards, I think they can add something to the board. A bunch of these could be just lands, of course, but, I mean, probably not everything. Okay, so they have a main deck way to deal with the Virtue. Sure. I could loot just to get the treasure, but I mean, I don't even need a treasure here. Yep, game is over. Uh, what a what a game! They even build late, uh, you know, sacrifice the extraordinary turn just to not, you know, to actually deck out because they had only eight cards left remaining in their deck. But of course, they had a superior board position here. All right, there's nothing I can do about that one card other than maybe have a spider food, but. Uh, I guess Spiderfoot can deal with the Grasp of Fate and other random flyers. There could be something blue. I can also deal with the Griffin area. I think it makes sense, yeah. Spiderfoot is here. Uh, did I, do I need stuff like Unnatural Growth? Probably not because they have even the Troublemaker Oof here to deal with it. Okay, what do I not need? I don't need the Wicked Visitor in this matchup. It's the worst card in the deck, easily. All right, let's try another one. <laughs> um, Titanic Growth is uh, interesting because it can help battling against the... Well, it's also very good against the Agatha Champion, actually. And of course, you know, they have the big creatures here that might need... I might need help dealing with them, so I, I care about this card enough to play it, but what is this, the cut then? What would be the cut? Because the rest of the, of the stuff in here is pretty good. I guess the Red Tooth Vanguard is like not so great. I'm, I'm going to very low amount of creatures here. But I don't think I can beat them by curving out. Doesn't really seem like how it's gonna go. So I'm, I'm gonna also cut this. It's more like a grindy matchup. So, let's go. 
But yeah, that was a good example of losing to exactly one card. It didn't deal any damage to me, but it <laughs> enabled them to do all the important stuff there. Alright, so here I will just get the food here. I don't think I need to scry yet. I will rather draw one card and then, then scry. I have more information because if I draw now a land or not, that, that will affect how I want to scry here. I do want to draw the land. I don't mind having the werefox. I have so few creatures after sideboarding that it's better to to actually have all of this stuff. I mean all the creatures that I can draw. And the land is of course important because of the screen path in here. I might as well do this. Okay, they actually had a spell stutter. Oh, so much of that plan. At least I can now resolve this guy and uh, and um, well, I suppose I will just um, crack the candy trail. I'll crack it now. Maybe I will give the counter with this thing. If I draw a land now, then I know what I will be doing on the next turn. Okay, Royal Treatment is actually useful. If I give it the counter, they might bounce it with the thing. Okay, let's let's not do anything. Not, not crack even the food here. That's not necessary. Not right now. Okay, well, I will be um, dealing with the journey, but do I want to actually play it slow or fast? Kinda like the idea of playing the treatment here. Do not get it bounced, or exiled rather. Okay, there's nothing in exile for now, and I did draw the land, so I'm going to play the screen puff for now and consider playing the spider food on the next turn. This also creates me a food token, so it's good for the scavenger. I'm gonna go for the bounce, but I can now make another food with it. I guess they might want to try to trade with the path, and that's where the Veros Ferocious Werefox comes handy. This will be a 5-4, this will be a 5-6 Death Toucher Trampler, so I'm still getting my food token as well. This is good news for me. Oh, they actually chose not to take the risky block here, alright. Well, I'm not going to give them any cards from the extraordinary journey, so let's do this now. And let's just um, do this thing too. There's the 6-5. And uh, it will trade with the screen puff. Unless I 
draw like a um I could draw like a titanic growth of course. Well, I guess I'm going to in fact bargain this thing. I have so many foods here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I draw. Okay, there is a titanic growth. Well, that makes sense. So put up to two of them into your library. So I don't have to take any lands here. I can put three lands to the graveyard unless I want to have like a another. I have two forests untapped still. Um. Could maybe just yeah I don't need to so up to two of the marks so I'm gonna put this in my library and then I draw and this the rest will be going to the graveyard and then I will draw some unknown card yeah this makes sense so now what I can do is just do this attack and um, Save my guy. That's the Titanic Crowd was, you know, sideboarded in partly for the reason that um, they have these six fives. So it did its job. Also, the spider food, which I sideboarded against this, did its job. So it's uh, wonderful how sometimes sideboarding does really make things different. Okay, that's something I won't care about. Um, mm, mm, mm. Now they have a... They could have a royal treatment. But I guess it's fine. I can I can do this attack. I can have both the feeds, the cauldron and the werefox here now. They can also do a double block if they really want to play it safe. And, and uh, I I guess I will play around the royal treatment. I will. And now I can um, return target card you own in exile that is that has an adventure to your hand. Okay, I could get the scavenger. I think I'd rather play it though. So, because uh, that's the mana efficient play to do. Let's see if they have a counter. Actually, I want them to counter this rather than, than anything else. Although, if they have a spell stutter, I should have done the other way around. Well, anyhow, uh, exile target player's graveyard. I don't have any other stuff in Exile. No, I don't. So Exile at their graveyard. And then I'll just play the scavenger. I have enough food to make it relevant. But let's see if they have a spell starter now for this guy. They did not. They can, they of course are effectively... Oh, they didn't even crack the trail here. What's going on? I mean, why wouldn't they draw a card and gain three there? They had the mana for that. I was even tapped out, so there was nothing I could have done. I think they just wasted here some mana. Okay, so they can do that, but now I have a good. They don't, don't by the way, have a royal treatment because they tapped that way. So let's do this. And um, well, well, this is some good stuff here. That is some amazing stuff. I want to draw them both. The order does it matter? So I'm going to play the Fox. That's going to leave me with three mana. If I crack this, I have only one mana, so it, so it does actually matter here. I can play the food token here. Yes. Assuming they're gonna block. I mean, if they don't block, that's fine for me as well. So now I can um, I mean I can, I can still do this but I don't feel like doing that now. I had had I known that I would have wanted to have this welcome to sweet suit be. 
you know, the one to draw here, but I guess that did happen. Now, I do have the option to just play this as a uh, creature, but I think I will take the food now. I'll take the food now. I don't think there's like a big rush in here. They still have a 9 life because of the candy trail. Do they have the griffin thing? Okay, they, they are down to one card, but with the candy trail taken, of course, draw one extra card. Okay, so now they have mana up for some shenanigans. So do I want to use my Fox here now into their things? Probably not. Just to play the Welcome to Sweet Tooth and the Hollow Scavenger here. I'm gonna get, you know, five plus one plus one counters and I'll kind of also make the big thing have a trample on a crucial turn. But now the important thing is also that the Scavenger here can just... Uh, Threaten, uh, you know, dealing five damage, so I don't have to rely on the werefox here. Okay, now they finally crack that thing. How do they scry? To the bottom, so they are digging for something good. And they didn't see that in the top top card there. Okay. Graceful takedown. Well, I don't need to risk it. I'll just attack with the scavenger. See what happens. This is a fine trade. I don't need to do any tricks here if they if they let this go. I'd rather just uh, play it safe. I know I could play the Werefox now here as a 4-3, but I'd rather have it as a surprise. A surprise trample, you know, for, for the creature that's gonna pick up these plus one plus one counters. But that they have another candy trail here. <laughs> They're gaining a lot of life from the food. And I could have played it, you know, I could have taken a little bit of a risk here, but I, I'm, I think I can afford to play around things for now. So that's why I didn't go for the Werefox attacks or activations rather. Because I do think that I can play around things. Okay. Um, this taken bounce, so I suppose I'll do this. Although if they have something like a Kellan's light blade, it will be annoying. But this is fine. But oh, they have a Kellan's light blade now, <laughs> of course. A oh, thread point click. I can't untap that sadly. Well. Okay then, well, I'm not gonna play around another trick, if they make a block I'll just uh, do this. If they have now another instant speed trick, then I'm just like, okay then, that happened. <laughs> Frolicking familiar, well, um, they did have another trick, so I can save this guy. Yeah, I'm gonna save it because this also allows me to save my, you know, the, the Ferocious Werefox here. Because otherwise it would get countered. So now this will 
deal one damage and uh, this will go to exile still and uh, I, will not, I will still lose my token but it's not a big deal now I have still a healthy number of removal here but yeah they had double tricks there I guess in the end it didn't matter who I'm gonna give the tokens well actually yeah I mean, I mean the counters the reason I didn't give them the counters to the 1-1 one, one token is that because I know they have multiple of these gatekeepers so it would be annoying if they just bounce it but yeah they did have a bunch of tricks there with six lands I'm gonna just do this and take down the click I can use the feed the cauldron to deal with the familiar now please don't say that you drew um, a royal treatment here because that would be really annoying they have a prophetic prism so they have one green up okay they did not so now I'm still I still need to deal all this extra damage because they have gained so many life points from food but um, I have also a healthy food buffer here so I don't have to worry about it. you know taking damage from the flyers too much Okay. I even have a blocker for a flyer, but regardless, this is the best play now. They have to have something good here to deal with the 4-5 if they go for double blocks. Um, well, I can even use the feed the cauldron in that case, but I think I will just trade with them. I mean, they make them lose two creatures. Because there's still the possibility they have something like a royal treatment. Although, if they had specifically a royal treatment when they go for the double block, the feet the cauldron would still be good. Okay, this is a nice one. Um, so let's just attack for five and see what happens. Oh, for attack for four, I mean. Get a food token as well. Okay, that worked. I'm gonna play the Werefox here because I can have mana up for the Candy Crapple if I need it. And I can end of turn kill the Transmitter by sacking one of the foods here. Okay, so they're going to exile what exactly? Well, they didn't... Yeah, nothing, because they, it was grayed out. Alright, so with this thing, I should maybe... I should still do this. I mean, the problem is, if they do actually have the Royal Treatment, I don't want to play around the one card, but it's such a nasty one if they do have it. Because I could now kill this so that I can actually attack with the Werefox too, but... Uh, I mean, I can still attack, and they will just trade. Okay, what's the worst thing that can happen? If they have a royal treatment... Okay, if they have it, I don't think it's that bad. This will be a 4-5, but my attack with the screen buff will be good. They would have to triple block it. They would have to triple block it. Look at this, they have it. <laughs> Uh, but but I, I decided that this is a good play regardless because now I can... If they don't triple block it, I'm still in a very good shape here. Because I have to feed the cauldron here. So, let's go. Guess they can just take the 4 damage, but it's still fine for me. And I'll, I'll play my Beanstalk Worm and I'm happy about that. Now the thing is, if they triple block... I just let all of them go away. If they double block, I can kill the transmitter and have my screen puff survive. So, because I can do this. And there's no real treatment now, I made them use their tricks. And now if I draw any more lands, I can just teach them to the vault. I have actually drawn, you know, only six. Well, now there are two. I, I, I didn't draw all of these because I milled them, but... Well, that was a good top deck, but it's still not going to be quite good enough. Because I still have... Okay, well, I have, for example, this thing. 
Okay, I am also, also low on time here. Um, I don't know why did I go for the search engine and not this. I thought I have mana for both, but oh well. Let's just do fast because I need to win this game and the next one in 11 minutes and so on. So transmitter was a good draw, but... I actually was supposed to do this pre-combat because I do want to make the treasures now that I have the ginger here. I can discard whatever I draw. Yeah, this could have been something that matters. Okay, it wasn't. But yeah, it was a mistake on, on my behalf. Um, yep. This will be a huge creature when I sack all my artifacts. Okay, this is game over now. They have 10 life, so it's not exactly over yet. But it's close. I get some scries here. Mm, don't even need that one. Probably. <laughs> Maybe I do. So let's do this first. Discard this. And I'm going to cast... Now they are at 10, so I can't make... I would need to make this in, an, in the 9 power creature. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Can I sack... Okay, well, how much the number, um, amount of mana I have? I have 5 mana, 6, 7. Uh, yes, that's enough, isn't it? I think this is enough. I'm not sure, but I, I thought it is enough. Because I, I can just... Uh, is this enough? I think it might be. Oh, what the heck happened? Yeah, that happened. Could there be any more painful? I mean, that's what happens when you play with low, low amount of time. Please draw a big thing that makes sense. Okay. I, I don't think I can. I mean, of course I had the win there. I mean, if I didn't have the win, I had the win on this turn now. But that was just a horrible misclick. But let's not... Go to, go to despair yet. I mean, it is what it is. They are, <laughs> they are again having. A, the problem actually starts to be here that uh, I'm, I, I need. To, I mean, I can't, I can't waste the time here. So, I mean, well, you saw the misclick. I, I was supposed to sack food, but I sacked Sir Ginger. Okay, they have a cooped up. I still have my beanstalk worm here and the active vault here. Um, of course, this is a, that was horrible, horrible mis, um, misclick. Let's not make any more misclicks. I can still win this game. I can cast this thing on the next turn. Unless they get like... I, okay, they already used their oof. They have the um, white thing that can... Yeah, they have still stuff that can matter, but... Well, I mean, let's just play quickly. <laughs> oh, what a misclick. That was such a horrible thing. But I will still win with the Beanstalk Worm here. So, I'm there at 9, so it's 2 attacks. I think I'm just playing the Persistence here. I don't need to use it as a... I don't need to use it as a... Minus 3, minus 3. Now, I will have to show this card that I didn't have to show <laughs> otherwise, but... Uh, I'm just happy I still won this game and I actually didn't even... Well, I haven't won yet, but it's close. Let's do this because I might still want to do this stuff in here. I have enough treasures to cast this. Okay, so now they... If they don't... If they find an answer for the worm, they probably... Oh, what the heck? I have only one card left in the deck. Look at this. I almost... I'm actually gonna lose here. Oh man, I'm gonna lose here because... <laughs> I mean, if they have a blocker, I will lose. Oh, what a draw, and they got a draw three here. Ah, that's the... Okay, I can kill that with the feed the cauldron. Okay. But no, they have something else. What is the card that makes me win right now? Um... No haste, there's no nothing. Gumdrop Poisoner. 
I mean, they're having something. I'm, I'm decking out here. This is horrible. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do here, because uh, none of this matters, really. Exile... This, nothing goes to my library. You don't own in exile. Okay, I can't put anything into my library. Okay, okay. Well, let's do this. It doesn't matter. I, I don't think this matters, really. I'll exile their grave. Because they're gonna have a removal and I'm gonna draw my last card, which is just a swamp here. And this is going to be now. I don't have... Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> or is this a victory? Okay, it actually was. How many mistakes can you make in one game? And I still need to win in 8 minutes. Um, I don't know why is it so difficult. Because I had drawn so many cards, looted so many times that I had an empty deck here. So if they just had you know, a way to gain a, a little bit of an additional life, they had the food here. Or just have a blocker. Or I guess I could have killed the blocker. This gives trample. <sighs> Now I just need to focus. No more stupid mistakes. The sacrificing of the Sir Ginger was such a, such a horrible thing. Alright, I need to be a little bit faster, so maybe I need to play something like a Red Tooth Vanguard after all. I guess I can play that and not play like one candy trailer. Something like that. Yeah, I'm gonna do it like that, just to have, have you know... Maybe I could have even played the 5 drop thing that doubles power and toughness, but I just don't have the mana for that. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. This is such an embarrassing game now. I mean, this is going to YouTube, uh, but I, I'm tempted to almost <laughs> scratch recording this video because how, how badly I played there. Okay, now I'm not going to waste time. I just need to play quickly. Alright, that's fine. That's fine. Ginger. I, I wasted like three minutes because of that, or, or maybe more. Okay, so we are going to just uh, trade hits in here. There's no point using. No, I will just go here and not activate the scavenger. Of course, if they do activate theirs, then I'm gonna do it. That and then what I can do is I can just uh, play this one and play the second scavenger now. They are also running out of time, but I mean I still have less time than they. But it's only a difference of one minute, so they can't really take the stalling tactic. For them, they need to also make quick decisions here. They don't know that I have a... Okay, that's again happening. I'm going to spider food that thing. In me. Okay, let's just make sure I'm tapping mana correctly. I might even actually prefer a scrying here. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Prefer the scry here. Because I want to have the land drop for the next turn. And I'm actually almost tempted to get both land drops. But once one forest will be enough here. Yep. Because this could also be a race to whichever player, uh, you know, loses time first. Because this could be, I mean, both have a lot of food. I mean, they have more in their deck. 
So it's possible that... Uh... Okay, they can deal with my candy drill, that's fine. They can have a counter spell here though, so how do I do this? Um, well, with the, because of that, I'm gonna actually create a food token and uh, play this and now I have a royal treatment up still. Then I play this into a counter spell on a later turn, perhaps. I hope they try to bounce it with the thing. Okay, they did not. So, counter poisoner, no reason. Okay, let's just go here. Um, yeah, that's fine. I want to have one up for the real treatment here, so let's do this. It resolves, that's good. Still a difference of one minute in terms of time. Time bank here for both of us. They are flooding out here, actually. Treatment for this guy. Okay. Time difference starts to be closer now that they have they are using time for uh, their decision. Okay, there's a gatekeeper, no bouncing there. So now they can trade. Okay, let's not make any stupid mistakes with Sir Ginger this time. I'm gonna do this first. I can actually do some great stuff with the Werefox here. Um, because if they just block with the Gatekeeper... Oh, actually, that's not correct. This is a real roll token. Replacing the, replacing the token doesn't do much here. So instead, what I'm doing is... I'm going to actually do damage here. Get some Scries now. Don't need this. Okay, candy trail, but it's okay. It's again a minute difference. So yeah, I I will just have to play faster. Maybe I won't be talking as much here now, just to make sure that the six minutes will be enough in here. This cry two on top. That's of course bad for me. Let's see if they tap out, tapping out here for something. Could be a bounce spell on the search into reduce. There's nothing I can do about it. So let that happen. Oh, do I want to? I'm gonna do this now. Just to be able to double spell on the next turn. Feed the cauldron, that's not bad. Because I want to do the Werefox and the Search Ginger now. And not waste any more time here. If they play the 6 5, what's my game plan here? Okay, they make that into a smaller creature. Sure. Gatekeeper. Well, the Scavenger will be quite good here. Oh, Grim Search, let's. Bargain this thing, see what happens, make the search ginger be bigger. Graceful takedown is great here. Um, these go to my library. So Titanic Growth and Graceful Takedown go to my library. I will draw those things. And uh, I'm surprised I haven't made any mistakes yet. Pump this guy. Eat this. Uh, that's probably good. And use the takedown. I can actually choose all of these guys. Why not? Here. Okay, I didn't even choose. The, I, I understand now. Um, this is a lethal attack if they don't block the... I can attack with the Werefox because they have to block. So Ginger here. This is 11 damage. So this thing tramples. So they, that's the best block. But it's just a jump block. And uh, with 4 minutes and 51 seconds, I will be winning this game and the match, and what a match it was. The game 2 was such an embarrassing game uh, from the point on where, where I sacked the search engine by accident. <laughs> okay. Um, I can give this like minus... 
but then I don't have mana to. Yeah, let's just attack with everything and see what happens. With the Titanic growth, this should be quite easy now. If they deal with both of these 4 3 and this thing, well, I guess. Well, let's see how they block. If they deal with one of them, block the other one. I haven't even used this one yet. I probably won't have to use it. So this is fine. Uh, damage here is gonna work for me. All right. Oh, I even had four minutes and thirty-eight seconds. I, th I think I used less than four minutes or around four minutes in this last one. But yeah, sorry about the game too, because not only did I accidentally crack this to gain life instead of cracking a food to make this larger. I also used my looting artifact without checking the number of cards in my deck and I was... I mean, if the opponent just drew any interaction for my one attacker on the last turn, I could attack before decking out. That would have been game over and match over there. But they, even though they got the draw three cards effect, they didn't have interaction for my attacker. So, <laughs> uh, pretty horrible stuff, but at least I won here. Okay, well, I have had some very decent starting hands. I mean, with enough lands in every game. Three is kind of the ideal hand for most limited decks. Three lands with both colors. And I even have the... I can use my mana on turn 1 and... And at turn 2 and turn 3 very nicely. I'm, I'm thinking about if I should play the Welcome to Sweet Tooth yet. So let's see, I get a 1-1 one, one token, then a food token. So I suppose... Not a black green. I suppose I can do this because on the next turn I can play the Wicked Visitor and get another food from here. Yeah, this makes sense. Then I can put the extra counters, which I have a lot of now. Basically, that will be, what, three extra counters? No, no, four extra counters. I mean, four counters from chapter three here. If the opponent doesn't interfere here somehow. Vermin, okay. Mm, 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 I'm not going to attack into that, just in case. I want to have two creatures alive here. Because of the chapter 3 in here. They can of course have an instant to kill my guy in response. But then they do. And in here, I think I will target the 1-1 one, one here. It will become a 5-5. Five, five. And if they have like a rat out, which I'm maybe hoping I can respond uh, by countering it with the ferocious werefox. Well, not countering, but, you know, preventing the death of the 1-1. One, one, one. So if they now attack with the vermin, I'll take the damage. Because if, they, if I trade with the vermin now and then they kill my remaining creature, I have no counters to add. Although if it, if it is an instant speed removal, like a candy crabble, I will still not get... I won't, I won't benefit from the... from the ability. But now I do, and I actually even have a couple of lands I can just discard here. And, um... Yeah. They are down to two cards themselves, and uh, I can play a Hollow Scavenger here. This becomes a 5-5. Five, five. Well, now this is uh, now that they are tapped out, I obviously would block here the Vermin, but <laughs> they realized that maybe it's not going to make sense. 5-5, um, five, five, because no, it, it is. Yeah, four. Uh, there are three foods, but it will be X plus one. So four counters. Making this into a 5-5 five, five is going to be good enough. I could make this into a 6-6, six, six, but I guess 
If they have a removal for the creature, I'd rather have a 2 2 left over. They go down to 14. And, 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 and. I'll, I'll play this. If they have another discard effect, then they do. But at least I have mana up for the, you know, the scavenger pump here. That's the important part. Okay, taken by nightmares. Yep, they get to scry even because of this wicked token. And uh, how do they scry? The hollow scavenger can deal five damage this turn. Baron already being a 2-4 is actually doing a good job blocking the Visitor here, but I suppose the Visitor is holding also back their ground ground force here. We are thinking about the Scry, one to top, one to bottom, alright. Don't think they're gonna attack with anything they want to. Okay, with that they are attacking, and that's a great trade for my Wicked Visitor, which has no meaning now that <laughs> the Naughty is here, but of course they chose not to attack. Understandably. Yeah, they don't have a good double block because I would kill both of their things. So it's just gonna be damage dealt to them. Mm, I think it's worth sacrificing a food here. I do, I'm a little bit afraid of them, you know, of getting another fairy and starting to gain life with this thing, but at least in that case they have to attack with it, so it won't be able to block. Okay, so that's gonna be a three. Okay, I don't know what's happening now. I don't care about the Wicked Visitor at all, so I'm willing to trade this to any kind of a trick they might have. Okay, Scream Puff. Big, but not big enough to actually battle with the scavengers here, so... And I have still two food, so I can attack with both. Okay, that is very good news for me. Um, so yeah, that happens. I'm going to do this. And do this, tapping the swamp. And now these are dealing a total of 4 damage. So let's actually save our guy. That was great for me. And then I can have my land, and I still have a 5-4 and the Werefox left, and you know this thing is uh, less effective now that I don't have other foods, but I might find other foods, but they also had another 4-5 here, but at least they are top decking now. I'll get my forest, I think. Yeah, you don't have an attack because I have the Visitor here, so you can just... Uh, Past the turn, and I will have uh, some decent draws here. Even that is actually fine. But let's play the 5 4 and maybe force a trade with this path, unless this card they just drew is going to, you know, mess up my plans somehow. If they attack, I think the Beanstalk Worm is just going to block. Now they might have their own Ferocious Werefox, for instance, in which case maybe double blocking with the Visitor and the Worm would make sense. But then how about if it is like a Titanic Growth Candy Crabble? Oh, well that is one heck of a draw. But maybe I can still overwhelm them. Um... I think I'm gonna play the one land so that I can double spell this turn. I guess I can find a way to create food and then my scavenger is threatening an attack, but maybe it doesn't make sense. Let's make them tap my guy first and Yeah, I mean this was a good draw, but I think I still can yeah, I can I can have good draws, and I have of course this collector's vault, and I don't need to keep any more lands for now. 
So I can just discard all the lands. And they drew uh, uh, just a land there, so this is now fine. And that is going to be fine as well. I can attack with everything now. Now they will probably crack this thing to draw some cards. But... Oh... This thing already has the... Yeah, actually that's... Yeah, I'm gonna have to do it like this. If I attack with everything, they can block the scavenger and I can't actually give it a plus one plus one because it already has a roll token. If I attack with everything, they would take six here. Mm. No, I'll just do this. Now they can still uh, sacrifice the crown in response, but I think this would be a fine outcome for me. Because they might, you know, then draw a trick, but then they wouldn't have the crown anymore. And they choose that, that line, which is nice. And of course this Wicked Visitor is actually now doing relevant things with the life losses, thanks to my enchantments going to graveyard. Alright, that was a good, good turn cycle, because they just drew a land, and I drew a business spell here, and now I can still keep using the vault here. Okay, I think this is gonna be a lethal attack now, or is it... So they tap the, uh, the trampler, one of them, and then block this, and... Yeah, well actually it wouldn't have been lethal if they tap down the 4-3, block the womb, they take 6 and this won't die because it's tapped down, so the trigger here wouldn't do anything, but of course I was about to win there. Now, they have uh, Hilda's Crown of Winter, that means I'm going to have a spider food, and the Auf thing that I didn't pick uh, would be relevant too. In both of these matches would be relevant, but I didn't get it, so that's that. Um, Black Green. Don't like the Whisper at all. Um, I'm kind of tempted to use a Titanic Crowd, but it's actually not so good against the big things that have a death that's it's just a two for one, but it might still be the best way to deal with them. Although I have a few creatures, I can trade with my own puffs with the Beanstalk Worm. These scavengers can become five power, so maybe it's not such a big deal in the end. But the card I'm going to cut here against the Black Green is the Wicked Visitor. And now do I want to still have access to the Vanguard here? I think I can have access to the Vanguard. Um, don't think the Dream Spoilers is gonna be good here. I'm almost tempted to try this, but maybe not. Maybe in game three if it goes to that. Right, another mm, keepable hand, not amazing. But I'm gonna keep it. They actually mulligan to six there, and um, <clears throat> I have both colors. I have removal, and I don't think this matchup is so much about curving out as it is about resilience. And you know, grind out grinding the other maybe somehow. Okay, the vault is definitely a nice tool up to have here. If they have more creatures, I can just use the feed to the cauldron. If not, I don't need to use the feed right now. Okay, well that's... Hopefully I find my spider food for that thing. Let's just do this now. Mm, this can go away and... Uh, Let's do this. I can use the candy grapple if they like make me discard two and try to make this into give the wicked token to this thing. I can respond by candy grapple because the world makes those nice treasures. They did not have that. Okay, that's the best play they have. That's totally fine for me. I'm not gonna waste my treasure on killing the battle node right now. I will be just um. Probably playing the puff in here. 
It's not the greatest thing because, you know, they can just keep tapping it. But at least they have to keep tapping it, otherwise it will do some nice work. And it's actually quite nice to have on the battlefield with a graceful takedown. I can basically take out anything because this has death touch. But let's see, they might have, you know, shattered the oath of their own now. But I can still kill the Baron Noddy with Feed the Cauldron. And of course also with the Candy Crabble because the Treasure Collector's Vault of course makes me a bunch of, um, uh, you know, bargain, bargain fodder. The Treasure Tokens can be used for bargain as well. Now if I draw, draw my spider food I would be very, you know, um, happy about how the game is going. Because I have all this removal and I will find gas with the collector's vault even if I hit a, you know, a pocket of lands or something. Let's just do this first. Um, forest. I'm still gonna hit my land drop so I'm gonna play the land and now I can, you know, try to attack. And I think I'm just gonna deal with this guy. I have so much other removal that I mean, even if they have a royal treatment, then they do. Okay. No, no scry this time. That I can kill with. couple of options. I might actually just go for the least reliable removal spell, which is the Graceful Takedown. I don't need the Monster Roll token, and I have the treasure to actually also use the Graceful Takedown now that they are tapped out, so... Here, here. Okay, there's another Baron Nordia. I'm happy now that I got rid of the first one. And I will be getting rid of this one too with the Gumdrop, poison Gumdrop Poisoner. Um, is there a big rush for that though? I don't think there necessarily is. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the food token and then return this guy to my hand with the Sentinel of the Lost Lore. Then I can make another food token. Because I have other cards that care about food. So I'd rather have them available here. If they crack this to draw like three cards, I think I'm still in a fine shape. That's not doing anything. Yeah, I had, I have no targets for that. No two mana cards for me. So they had to just play it. They, they were sick of waiting for it to do something. Okay, that is a good one too. So now I'm doing some damage. They will get the food token on the next turn. Yeah, I, I'm gonna play this. But I, I will then try to kill this before it gets the wicked token in chapter 3. And I have the mana to do it. Sack one food. Then cast this. Give it, my, give it minus 3, minus 3 there. Champion is gonna beat the sentinel here. That's... That's what's going to happen. And, um, yep. It's good for them, but I still don't think it's too bad. They will tap the screen path. I will attack with the Werefox, which they probably won't be blocking.
Hmm. Uh, do they have like um not dead after all if they were thinking about if they should tap or not? I don't think they want to give me any food here, so that's that. Now I think this I will leave in my hand to, to loot away at some point. Sack this food. Do this. Give here minus three, minus three. I still have two removal spells for the this thing. They also might have, you know, the, that the thing that makes me discard two cards. So um I don't want that to happen. Okay, they are gonna draw a card from that thing. Well, I will use my Saturday Oath. They did have a royal treatment. It will enter tapped. And I can still use the Candy Crapple to deal with it. And they actually, they either tap down the Lifelinker or the one that gives me a food token. Neither of these options is very good for them. I think I'm going to now just go for the Scries. I do hope they don't make me discard the Candy Crapple, but it is what it is. The Scavenger is good with all the food I have. They are also down to 5, which is not a lot. Vampiric Rite is... I mean, sack a creature... What what, uh, what kind of a creature for that do they have here? Okay. Well, I suppose I'm just trying to attack first. They're gonna tap down the Scream Puff. And then... Um, that works, and then I'm going to sack a food token, try to kill this thing. They can sack it to draw a card and gain one life, but of course the point is that they're still gonna lose, unless they have something else. They have only two mana left now. And that's not gonna do anything. Okay, well that was a little bit easier and also a lot faster match than the previous one I used. What, only less than 8 minutes and they used, you know, 11 minutes and a little bit more than that. So, yeah, that was a good good match. A lot better than the first one, even though I won both of them. Uh, I liked how the match two went more. On the play, and with the candy trail, I think this is a safe keep. I will find some black here. And I can still play the Welcome to Sweet Tooth on turn 2, no matter what. Alright, none of this is gonna be kept, because I need... Although the Royal Treatment is actually quite good here. The candy trail adds to the, you know, the... Oof. I mean, this might be a little bit greedy, but I'm actually going to do it like this. And I don't think I'm gonna even play this right now, because I want to have the token so that I can give it the royal. Yeah, I'm going to... Oh, maybe... Ah, uh, that was a mistake. Um, I kind of forgot it, because... Uh, I mean, I don't want to crack this, because it's a food, so it will add the, add to the number of counters. But I, I suppose it wasn't the worst play, because now I can play this, you know, and have the royal treatment up. Yeah. So this way I get to protect this from at least one removal spell. Could even be the Flicka coin, and that would be fantastic to counter because they wouldn't even get the card or a um, or a um, treasure. But that's not what happened. Oh, I don't like that. So much for my welcome to Sweet Tooth. Then that's exiled now. Oh well. Oh well. Now I need to hit my swamp, which I did. Um, any reason to... Well, let's keep the royal treatment up. I can crack this end of their turn. I can double block the elemental, and if they have some shenanigans, I can maybe counter it. Unless it's... Um, yeah, I don't have a black mana, so if they had like a giant growth there. 
Titanic growth, I mean, that would be bad. Well, here I will just take the trade. I'm not gonna use the treatment here. I don't need my 2-2 two -two for anything. Okay, I have a blocker for that. Well, I don't actually... Let's, let's see if they try to actually make this thing, I mean, if they are greedy and make this, give this young hero role token to the elemental, they don't. So, I'm, I'm letting them do the damage here now, and I think on the next turn I will use the Feed the Cauldron. The Candy Crabble will use the Feed the Cauldron food to, to actually, uh, to actually, you know, deal with something bigger. But of course I won't let them have this. Get counters and maybe get some additional cards there. Okay, so this is like a stalemate. I wonder if I can get my mythic rare, that would be very nice. Okay, candy crabble in there, which is probably... Yeah, I think I need to grab all this guy. <laughs> kind of want to okay I'm gonna do this let's attack let's attack maybe yeah I'm gonna attack here I want to play the wave fox I know this is now a turn where I will not have mana up for the royal treatment but Okay, well, I'm not gonna let the Werefox go away, so I'm gonna do it like this. Now, they can, of course, trade trade here if they want to, but if they do that, I don't mind, and they don't even want to, understandably. I got rid of a Torch, the Tower. I trade it with the Royal Treatment. Okay, there's a Feral Encounter. They can have a... This thing, they can kill this guy. Okay, that's a, that was definitely good, too, for one for them. Now I'm a little bit in you know, trouble here. But let's just find our midi career, shall we? Because I haven't had that like early in any of the games. That's going to give me back the Werefox. I can't block the that guy. I guess I can just do this instead. It's more mana efficient. Exiling the graveyard is barely gonna matter now. And I can still use the other werefox in my hand to pump this if there's some kind of a need for that. Okay. So now if they don't tap out, I don't like... Oh, I don't like that one either. I guess they don't have that much food, at least yet. Yeah, okay. So now if they have another torture tower... Okay, what, what? That was unfair. That was absolutely unfair. Oh, that was really not good. I mean, look at all the stuff they played in this one turn and then they drew two cards. <laughs> I guess I can do the thing with the Sentinel of the Lost Lord though. Yeah, I can. That is nice. So it's gonna go to the bottom of the deck. So all of this. This goes to my hand, this goes to the bottom of the deck, and they will exile the graveyard. They still got to draw two cards with it, so it's not so bad. Bad for them. Now they know about the Werefox. Well it doesn't matter, I'll just uh, use the token here anyway. I'm not playing the land because I might draw my looting. Artifact. So attack. Do they attack with everything here? They don't have blocks. All right. So hopefully they don't have a response to this. But they did not. All right. Mm -mm -mm. They're gonna get two counters for some someone. I can live with that. So 
Should I attack? I have a 9 power of trample here. Of course they have a lot of damage here. But they don't have that great blocks, I don't think. Um, they can block with a 1-1 one, one and a 3-1 on the 5-4. And they might get this back with some enchantments. But then again, I'm not winning this game by declining attacks. I will have one blocker though, myself. They will take a bunch of trample damage now. I think it is better idea to attack still. I don't have to attack with the 5-4 though. You know, I don't have to. I can just attack with the 4-5. That doesn't, that at least makes them use the veteran and the vanguard to kill it. Rather than just 1-1 one, one and 2. Thank God. Okay, let's do that. Let's play it slow. If I was able to play the Hollow Scavenger this turn, because of course I can, but I will take the food from it, so I won't have mana to do it. Yeah, that would be maybe a little different in that case, but... Hopefully I'm not gonna die this turn. Some of them will pick up two counters, but that's only two. I've seen worse. Okay, they spread out them. Now the scary thing about this is that they still have three cards. They just drew one, but they had two cards before their turn started. And they have a recruiter, so I'm at least happy I didn't attack with how oh, the werefox here. But the problem is, am I gonna die? Because I didn't want to play the land. I know that I now lose some life because I mean I, I don't have the opportunity to to gain the life here. But I, I could just draw my, you know, the walled thing. They didn't attack with everything, so that's good news for me. They only attack with the guys that make it make sense somehow. Well, I mean, I'm doing this. I will trade with one of those. I'm at 14, basically. That does mean I can't use the scavenger here. Oh, up the beanstalk out of nowhere. Didn't expect to see that from a deck like that. So, they are effectively at 17. Mm, but I have the 4-5 can block everything they have. This 4-3 can... I don't care if this trades with some of the stuff they have. I know I have this also, but I'm... You know, I will be a little bit... Oh, you know, I will be careful here now. Because I have only... I have only, um... Two lands in my hand, so don't really want to take two big risks. Now I have one up to crack both of these, if I need to. Wow, I want to have two of these cards as well. Now can I make them use the food before the chapter 3 resolves? Doesn't seem that likely. Well, there's the vault, which I was waiting for. Let's immediately see if I can draw something relevant. I could not draw anything relevant. So, if I attack with both, not good, I will lose. <laughs> well, I, I guess I don't lose because I have a 14 life if I use all my food to gain life and, and also the treasure here. But... Yeah, I guess I can attack with this scavenger. They might block with just the vanguard. Well, then they will just trade. I mean, I mean, no, no. Then I can use a food to save this scavenger. But if they block with the 1-1 one, one and the 3-1, then I don't have to use my food. I guess that maybe makes sense. Yeah, I don't like them having this. Because now if they can save their food... Uh, I mean, they, they're gonna pick up three counters on something, and if they, if they make this, uh, this this three three rat into a six six, that's already gonna be quite nasty. So I need to actually find my mythic rare or or just the regular rare too. The you know the thing that has lifelink and can be used to kill something. Okay. Well, they have a young hero role token, which is gonna give them back to Vanguard. Well, I, 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 ex, ex, 
I expected that to happen. It was quite unlikely to not happen. Because they, be, they probably have been sandbagging that thing in their hand. I don't know what's gonna happening here, but I have a two big bloggers and I am I can attack my boat, both of my treasures to gain gain um three life in here. So they did spread these counters up. I mean I still have to block here. Um I guess I'll block with uh I'll block with the 5 4. I could have double blocked to make it safe, but I actually don't want to. Okay, officially, I'm playing against a deck that has three welcome to sweet suits. I'm allowed to lose the game now. I mean, when they draw it too. Uh, th this was just a ridiculous set of draws for them. I mean, that really is. I need to get my own mythic rare now. Uh, this doesn't even really matter at this point anymore, what I do. I mean, <laughs> this is an amazing card. It's... And especially when you get three of them. I mean, there's just nothing I can do here. I can kill one of those guys, but it doesn't even matter. I mean, let's do it. Would I rather have... It's a monster, I don't care. I lose Tramble, but whatever. Yeah, if I can't draw my mythic red, I can't win here. Not, I mean, I will, I will need it, and I will need it immediately because next turn they're gonna get four plus one plus one counters, probably on the vanguard, and they can also just push for damage here. I can go to twelve by sacking the food, but if they drew something good now, that's not even going to be enough. Oh yeah. <laughs> Imagine if my deck had three of these, how good it was. I don't have anything with bargain. It would be nice to sack this away in response, but now they also have access to the six 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 seven I mean, so this is this is game over now. I can see what I get with this thing. Feed the cauldron is not going to matter too much. It's gonna matter enough that I can you know, kill the target. But, I mean, I still have to deal with the vanguard here, which is going to be pretty difficult. I lost my looting thing, so I might as well play my lands here. I don't think it, that even matters. I have so many treasures here. Yep, that is now a big guy. And they can play it safe. Sure. Just do this. And they're gonna play another end summit, are they not? No, they had that. And this is gonna allow them to draw a card from the beanstalk stalk now. Uh, no, they have four. I, at this point, I'm expecting them to have a fifth and sixth one too. You know, that is... <laughs> um, one, two, three. Four, four now. All right. And there's a scream puff. Which can trade with the vanguard, so that was a good draw. But uh, uh, am I gonna survive a fourth one? Besides, each of them have picked, well, maybe not the first one, but the rest ones have actually picked this one back. There is no victory unless I get my. I need to get my mythic rare. That is the only thing that can matter. Yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, what a game. <laughs> this is now a casual 8-6 Trampler. How many of these I have killed? Three. Okay, it's actually 
gonna be enough now to make me go to the next game. Uh, welcome to the Sweet Tooth times 3. Uh, it's safe to say that my result will be 2-1 here. <laughs> uh, the Dream Spoilers, how many instants I have? 5 in here still. And of course a bunch of adventures that have. Because I saw some one toughness things. Uh, that's not an... Okay, this is an instant. One, two, three instant adventures. And then real treatment. Candy crapple, a couple of feet to cauldrons. There's the cream search. Yeah, I think it's gonna make sense to play the dream spoilers. Try to get some value out of it. The spider food, I'm not even going to bother with it. You know, it's not even that great to deal with the sweet tooth. Um... The Wicked Visitor is actually decent in this matchup. Beanstalk Worm, maybe not so much. Uh, I would actually need to get this in one game. I got it in the, in the one that was a catastrophe, which I did win, by the way, but not because of this card. Uh, just to, you know, get to feel the power of this card, but no such luck. Mm, maybe the Vault is not so good here, because they have the f means to kill it for free. I mean, there's the Storm Keld Vanguard, and there was also the Troublemaker Oaf. So I don't think I like the Vault in this matchup. Uh, I also don't like the Sir Ginger because it's so good for them to kill it for free, basically. So I cut that one as well. And I will play like a Titanic Growth. Seems okay. And mm, almost would want to play this, but they have two ways to deal with it for free, basically. So maybe. Maybe I'll still play the beamstalk, beamstalk boom. Okay, let's do that. That's the sideboarding. Mm. I mean, I need to get lucky here anyway. I actually just do think of it. it's such a such a crazy thing that they have so many of those uncommons. And they were able to combine it with the Red Tooth Vanguard so nicely. As an added bonus. Okay, Scry to the Swamp. Mm, well, the Screen Puff is definitely good in this matchup. I think I actually will play it. I, I will uh, keep it in there because I can do other stuff before I hit my fifth land. That's first out of at least four. <laughs> mm, I guess I can deal with the. If they don't have anything expensive. Now well, that's the second. <laughs> yep, they have a good deck. So, I'm gonna play the Grim Search just like this without bargaining because I want to draw, you know, all kinds of stuff. I, I don't want to miss a land drop and I didn't want to use either of these now because I have the Scavenger and of course this is just gonna draw me a card regardless. Now that's a 4-4 which I'm gonna be able to kill with the Feed the Cauldron. Oh, and this is gonna also pick up some counters. <laughs> mm. And the next turn they're gonna give you know, more of those counters, which I could still, you know. Well, let's see. I have also, if I draw a land, that will be great. That would be great. Okay, because I have the graceful takedown here. So let's just first deal with this guy. Then they're gonna put the counters on something here. Well, both of these will become three threes when they attack. They're gonna get three extra counters, so... Mm -hmm. I guess I'll just um, do this and uh, attack. I will take uh, 6 damage from this and then use the feed to the cauldron. No, actually it's only 5 because it's of course not gonna get an another counter because the young, young hero won't be doing anything anymore. So only five, but they of course have all these cards still left. Titanic Crowd will be also 
somewhat useful, maybe. I'm kind of tempted to just use the Titanic growth here instead, so that I can save my creature rather than. Okay, so they're gonna um, not use that. Okay, this is fine. Well, okay, they didn't in fact even attack, which is also fine for me. Mm, screen puff is gonna be good. Okay. I dealt with two of these. But that, as long as I can't make them sack these other food tokens, the rest of them will be very good. Oh, they get to... They get to kill the scavenger. Okay. But they didn't find the creature they can cast, so that's only one for one. That is fine. Unless they can have... Okay, well, there's the th third one of those. Welcome to Sweet Tooth indeed. Treatment is good. I'll just attack here. At some point I will have extra mana to actually crack my food, so I'm not really in that. Oh, what happens? I'm, my <laughs> wire is doing something weird. Alright, I don't even know what's going on with that. Okay. <laughs> Nice. So, I mean, I have 12 life in here. And they can't attack into these cream puffs, and I even have a royal treatment here. Oh, they can attack now. I lost. Did I lose the game? Kind of forgot they have that. Is this enough damage? I block this. Yep, it is. Alright. Mm, nice. <laughs> what a game. What a game. Okay, come on, let it happen. Yeah, I actually was in a decent shape. Yes, it was a fun match because of how crazy stuff they had. I wish I had such a deck sometimes. But yeah, um, I mean, let's not let's assume they didn't have the recruiter. I was able to hold this quite nicely and then maybe actually start drawing, uh, you know, cracking cracking these for life. The Titanic Crow Trail Treatment. Being stuck with more. I mean, I had a very decent hand despite them having three of these weed tooth things if they just didn't have the win with the recruiter on this turn. Well, that happened, so <laughs> Let, let's not mourn that thing anymore. Um, yeah, the match two, I mean, I'm happy I won it, but damn, that game two there was such a crazy one. I, I, the, the opponent in the final match, of course, deserved to win. They had a very good deck. It's a shame I never got to use this. Um, you know, I didn't even use the minus three, minus three, I don't think, in any game. The only game where I cast this was the game two in match one. Or was it match two? Uh, it was match one. Where um, I, I, you know, played this and it actually didn't do anything. Uh, so, a shame. This thing... Oh, did stuff, at least it presented uh, some removal in the exile zone. Yeah, I, I like this deck, but I like the last round opponent's deck a lot more. <laughs> uh, anyhow, 2-1 after all this is good result, and uh, I will see you in the next draft. Let's see if I actually get the rewards here. Yes, I do. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye.